The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? <clears throat> when evil men come to destroy me, <clears throat> they will stumble and fall. For though a mighty army marches against me, we are going to be reading a lot, the whole thing of Psalm 27 today. And there's such a beautiful little tune there. We will proceed with all of it later. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I want to welcome you. And I'd like to get this voice cleared up good to be able to read well. On this February 2nd, oh, the second day of a brand new month, Miss Sharon. <clears throat> <clears throat> welcome, sister. Better take another sip of this coffee here. We will be reading today from Exodus 15, clear through portions of chapter 17. Miss Cindy and Miss Connie, <clears throat> welcome to a brand new day, February 2, February 2. And we're going to continue on here with this long trek through the wilderness and see what all happens. <clears throat> the Lord takes care of them all the way along, doesn't he? Welcome, Mel. <clears throat> Exodus 15, we will pick up with verse 19. We will pick up with 19. For the horses of Pharaoh went with his chariots and his horsemen into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters. Wham! Brought back the waters. Two walls. Can you imagine how that clashed when it came back? Two brought back the waters of the sea upon them, but the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. So this didn't happen until the last, last children of the child of the Lord stepped out of there, right? And then Miriam, <clears throat> the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances, and Miriam answered them. Miriam answered them? I kind of, that kind of struck me there. I hadn't really noticed. So they must have started off singing something. <clears throat> Good morning, Miss Donna and Yo Linda. And we learned a little one, I will, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and rider thrown into the sea. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and rider thrown into the sea. <clears throat> so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and then they went out into the wilderness of shore. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. That's tough. Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. And therefore the name of it was called Mara, bitter. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. How about that? A big miracle waiting for them. And three days in a hot desert with no water. Believe me, they were thirsty. And there he made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them and said, if you diligently heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, then I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And years ago, when we were first reading the Bible, we all got a hold of this wonderful book called None of These Diseases. 
and uh, I don't know if it's still out there, but wow, that was that was very enlightening about these scriptures. And then they came to Elim, <clears throat> where there were 12 wells of water. Wow, <laughs> big difference from the bitterness of Mara. 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees. Oh, a little bit of shade together under. So they camped there by the waters. And we move right along to chapter 16 of Shemot, Exodus. And they journeyed from Elim, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Tzin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt. <clears throat> so that's how long that they've been traveling now. Good morning, Miss Linda and Miss Kay. And then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moshe and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. Wow. Look at, I mean, you know, they could have complained a little bit. My goodness, look at this story of discouraging words filled with death that I'm sure Satan supplied them. Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat and when we ate bread to the full. They're forgetting a lot of the misery, aren't they? They're just remembering because they're hungry. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Which, you know, I had to stop and think, well, they have all their flocks and herds with them. Oh, well, moving right along. Then the Lord said to Moshe, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them. Everything is a test right now, isn't it? Whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Whoa, there's going to be an extra miracle bonus to get them over Shabbat, over the celebration, over that part of the week. And then Moshe and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, At evening you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your complaints against the Lord. But what are we that you complain against us? Also, Moses said, this sh shall be seen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and in the morning bread to the full. For the Lord hears your complaints which you make against him. And what are we? Your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. And so true. I mean, Moshe and Aaron and Miriam and all of them, they're standing there right with them. <laughs> they don't have anything to eat either. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And so then Mo Moshe spoke to Aaron, say to all the congregation of the children of Israel, come near before the Lord, for he has heard your complaints. Now it came to pass, as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Wow. Oh, wouldn't you love to really see that? And one day we will, right? Praise God. Let me get this page ready here. And so it was that quails, quails, very nice tender meat. So, Miss Cindy, he isn't even going to require them to slaughter anything. Quails covered the camp, 
and in the morning the dew lay all around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moshe said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need. One omer for each person according to the number of persons. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. And you know, the way it's described, so fine laying there. You know, at first I would think they would wonder if they could actually pick it up. And then the children of Israel did so, and they gathered some more, some less. So when they measured it by omers, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. And Moshe said, let no one leave any of it till morning. Notwithstanding, they did not heed Moshe. Oh, we are not good listeners, are we? They did not heed Moshe, but some of them left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and stank. Stink, 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 stunk. <laughs> I think. Okay, it stank. And Moshe was angry with them. So they gathered it every morning, every man according to his need. And when the sun became hot, it melted. Wow. Eat it early, right? Like cereal. And so it was on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moshe. And then he said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a Shabbat, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today, and boil what you will boil, and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until morning. And don't you think that the ones who didn't do that before, and it stank, are saying, wait a minute here, we've been through this, but guess what? There's a miracle. So they laid it up till morning as Boshe commanded, and it did not stink. Stink, stank, stunk. <laughs> Nor were there any worms in it. Wow, can you imagine how shocked and how pleased they were? Because he's going to prepare everything for them to have a day of rest. Oh, we need to start treasuring that a whole lot more, don't we? We still go out and we do this and that and the other. All right, moving right along. And then Moshe said, eat that today for, day, for today is a Sabbath, a Shabbat to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the Shabbat, there will be none. Now it happened that some of the people, they didn't listen. They went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moshe, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. 
stay home in your tent and rest, right? So the people rested on the seventh day. And boy, that is such a wonderful thing from the Lord. We really need to start doing that again. And then you're, you're prepared for the work week. And the house of Israel called its name manna. And it was like white coriander seed. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. How about that? They even had it sweet. They didn't have to worry about sugar. It came down from heaven sweet. And then Moshe said, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Fill an omer with it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And guess what? That omer, they kept. They kept. And it didn't stink. And Moshe said to Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer of manna in it and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moshe, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel ate manna 40 years. 40 years. I bet we heard some complaints over that. Until they came to an inhabited place, an inhabited land, and they ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is one-tenth of an epath. All right, we move right along to chapter 17. And then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of Sin, according to the commandment of the Lord, and they camped in Rephidim. But there was no water. Uh-oh, here, here we go again. There was no water for the people to drink. Speaking of drinking. Mm, thank you, Lord. That's very nice. Therefore, the people contended with Moshe and said, Give us water that we may drink. They're probably thinking back and remembering the tree that got thrown in and made Mara sweet, right? So Moshe said to them, Why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moshe and said, Why is it you have brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? About all the, the cows, cows were lowing. Translated, I would like some water. So Moshe cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moshe, go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moshe did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the contention of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Ooh, that's a dangerous question, isn't it? And let's get it. Uh, so those two words, one literally means tempted, and the other one means contention. So it was named exactly about the occasion, the event, right? All right, we move right along 
to Matthew, Matthew chapter 22, Matthew 22. And Jesus answered and spoke to them, the chief priests and the Pharisees, again by parables. This was the way to just stay out of arguments, wasn't it? Just present it to them and those that can understand will, and maybe, maybe some of them it'll just go right on by them. He spoke to them by parables and he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. What? Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and they went their ways one to his own farm, another to his business. Wow, what an insult. And the rest, see, this is where it's really bad. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. I don't want you to, I don't want that king to send people twice. Imagine that. But when the king heard about it, he was furious and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. And then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready. <laughs> wow. But those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, Go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways, and they gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. It didn't matter, the king said, invite everybody. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there, who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. Woo, there's a lot of understanding we need there the explanation of this, right? Good morning, Asif and Miss, Miss Laura. I'm just going to call you Laura. <laughs> and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So we are talking the outer darkness of hell. Woo! For many are called but few are chosen. And then the Pharisees went and they plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent to him their disciples with the Herodians saying, teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God in truth, nor do you care about anyone for you do not regard the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Oh, they think they have him, don't they? They think, oh, he won't be able to get out of this question. But Jesus perceived their wickedness. Ooh, that's a very good word there. In English, we have perceived. That's exactly what you and I need for the days we live in, isn't it? We need to perceive. Holy Spirit will bear witness in our spirits. Who is wicked? Who is good? We will be able to discern 
even though it's carefully hidden, their wickedness. And so Jesus said, why do you test me? You hypocrites. What? What? Jesus called them a bad name? Really? Hypocrites? Hmm. Wow. I mean, I get taken on big time by a bunch of people when they say, wait, you shouldn't say that. You suppose there were those standing there that day that said, oh no, he's into name calling. Hmm. I think I'll go home. Jesus says, show me the tax money. So they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, whose image and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Wow. Well, that isn't hard, is it? And when they heard these words, they marveled and they left him and they went their way. They couldn't trap him, could they? And it appears Jesus, I mean, he just called them hypocrites because that's what they were. And he went right on, show me the money. Wow, check out Kathy's graphics, y'all. She has some beauties of all of the Old Testament reading this morning and all of this. <clears throat> and so they left him. Hallelujah. The same day the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him, saying, Teacher, Moshe said that if a man dies, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were with us seven brothers. The first died after he had married and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. And likewise, the second also and the third, even to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died also. And you, and you, I gotta be careful. <laughs> Seven of them? This woman might have been grateful to die. <laughs> okay, do I need to repent? Therefore, in the resurrection, which they don't believe, so they think that they're just messing Jesus up, whose wife? Whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her. And Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures. There you go. Woo -wee. We don't want to hear those words said to us, do we? You are mistaken, Jane, because you don't know the scriptures. That's why I'm that's why I'm here every morning to read over and over, year after year. We need to know the scriptures y'all people are going to try to trip us up even as it gets worse in the world you are mistaken Jesus answered not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God for in the resurrection and so he's going to teach him oh there is a resurrection y'all in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage. Woo! How about that, ladies? But are like angels of God in heaven. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Ixach, and the God of Jacob, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitudes heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. Wow, and I am too. How about that?
That is awesome. All right, we move right along <clears throat> to a wonderful psalm, Psalm 27, a psalm of David, David, given and put to a tune. Probably not this one, but the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear when evil men come to destroy me? They will stumble and fall. For though a mighty army marches against me. And it goes on and on. Some of you from Ohio, you remember that? Miss Diane was given that tune and she would sing it so beautifully to us with her guitar. When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Oh, those are good words for us. Don't start counting how many are against you. Just don't fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing, one thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. And I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to our Lord. Oh, yes, keep right on singing. The best time to sing is when you least feel like it. When you <clears throat> gotta clear your throat like I do, and you think, well, you know, nothing. I'm a little down today, you know. No, that's when we should sing. Grab a song. You know, like this right here, as soon as I turn the page, before I even look at the words, I know there's a song waiting there for me because I drew little music notes beside the Lord is my light in my salvation. And I go, oh, wait a minute here. There's a song here. All right, we wrap up today, y'all, with Proverbs chapter 6, verses 20 through 26. Linda says, we will sing. Yes. Proverbs 6, verse 20. My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake the law of your mother. The law of your mother. Don't forsake it. Make your bed. Put your dirty clothes in the hamper. Stop picking at your teeth. Stop slurping your cereal. <laughs> You're considering buying a piece of land. Well, let's talk about it. <laughs> I mean, praise God. I mean, it starts out small, doesn't it? Little obediences. Little ones. And the word says, bind them continually upon your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will lead you out. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, what you'll be able to hear your mother's voice speaking to you in the back of your brain. And you'll say, yep, yeah, mom was right. Dad was right. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you awake, they will speak with you. For the commandment is a lamp and the law a light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Oh, that's a good line. To keep you, and, and here's the ultimate lesson for all these young sons, to keep you from the evil woman, from the flattering tongue of a seductress, 
Do not lust after her beauty in your heart before you've committed any kind of an act it starts here doesn't it and it works its way down to the heart if you don't cut it off Ooh. do not lust after her beauty in your heart nor let her allure you with her eyelids don't let those seducing looks grab at you for by means of a harlot a man is reduced to a crust of bread and an adulteress will prey upon his precious life and oh have you seen that where a man or it works in reverse also a woman gets snared and taken by someone of the opposite sex. The opposite sex? Yeah. Yeah, there's two. A man or a woman. Remember that now, when people try to tell you differently. Yes, my son and my daughters, listen to the Proverbs. They will instruct you in the way of a good life. Well, let's close up with prayer. Father God, Father God, how precious you are to us. How very, very precious. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We give you praise. You are our God. You are our Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for this precious word today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Holy Spirit, we'd ask you to, to keep showing and revealing to us. Keep showing and revealing to us everything that we've read today. Father God, I hold up Israel. I hold her up to you. And Lord, I'm asking for peace for Yerushalayim. Peace. Let your peace, Lord, be all over Jerusalem. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for wisdom, for Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu and the Knesset, the ruling body. Thank you, Lord, for the IDF, for these precious young people who go in and train, and, and they are everywhere, guarding their people. Oh, we bless you for it, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father God, I hold up America to you. I hold America up to you. And I'd ask you, Lord, please, please, Lord, we call out to you. We call out to you on behalf of many things that we have witnessed and that we have lived through, that, Lord, we don't see righteousness in them. And we're asking you, Lord, we're asking you to bring answers, to bring great answers, that we might live a peaceable life, that we might wake up with joy in our hearts every day. And we're determined to do that no matter what no matter what, because of the correction of your word. But Lord, you also, you were okay with David crying out, crying out when things troubled him. And so Lord, we take comfort that you've put all those Psalms in there for our generation also. Every generation has been blessed by your encouraging word in the Psalms, in the Proverbs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this. All of it ties in to your great crucif crucifixion, your great sacrifice on the cross for us, bringing us forgiveness for our sins, bringing us redemption. We thank you for it, Lord. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your Holy Spirit is so sweet, Lord. So sweet. We feel your presence. Holy Ghost. We'd ask you to walk along with us all day long. <clears throat> We'd ask you to hear all of our prayers, that you would heal many, many people, that we would be called to go out with anointed oil and anointed hands to lay on people and pray a prayer of faith, that faith would move the mountain out of that person's life. Show us, Lord, today what things you have for us that we might help build your kingdom this day and that you might be glorified, Lord Jesus. Glorified. All of God's people cried a hearty amen. Went on with your own prayers, petitions, songs, whatever you have to spend time with the Lord. Have a great day. I love you all so very much. Bye-bye.